you may know that Beethoven was a great fan of the cello, and he saw the potential of this instrument in ways that other composers prior to him really didn't. Before Beethoven, the cello was regarded generally as a sturdy but perhaps faceless upholder of the bass line. Beethoven expanded its role in his string quartets. He expanded it in his piano trios, in his orchestral music. And unlike Haydn and Mozart, who wrote no sonatas at all for the instruments, he wrote five. And they span all of the three major periods of his compositional development. He wrote two when he was 25, one when he was 38, and two again when he was 45 in 1815, during this period right on the cusp of his spiritually elevated final period. And this first piece really dates from that time, 1815. This is a time in his life when he had suffered quite a lot, physically, emotionally. By this date, he was, for all practical purposes, deaf. And suffering, in a way, was the, uh, it, it informed his music and it spurred his spiritual development. And he actually wrote a note to the lady to whom he dedicated this piece the year that he wrote it. Her name was Anna Marie Erdödy, and she was a celebrated Hungarian countess, quite beautiful, apparently. They were not romantically involved, but he treated her as a kind of a, well, he called her my father confessor, as a, I guess a joke. And I found a letter that he wrote to her this season of 1815, which contains a phrase that popped out at me. He said, we mortals with mortal minds are only born for sorrows and joys. And one might almost say that the most excellent among us only receive their joys through sorrows. And I think this piece, in a sense, traces this spiritual trajectory from sorrow to joy, from defiance to acceptance. Uh, it's an unusual piece. It has an architecture which he described as a fantasy, as a fantasia. It begins in rather ecstatic, mysterious, exalted music, very slow and contrapuntal with dialogue between the two instruments. And then it feeds directly into the first major movement, which is in A minor, and is very jagged and agitated and really uh, defiant in its quality. And then the third movement, we go back to the atmosphere, this mysterious contemplative atmosphere of the first movement, and he even repeats some of the themes that he introduced early on. There is in late Beethoven always this cyclical quality to the music. And finally, we enter into a rather triumphant, good-natured C major, which has this aura of acceptance and joy. So it really completes this trajectory from sorrow to joy. Wonderful piece and a wonderful opportunity to bring back Paul and Gilles. So please join me in welcoming them now. <laughs> 